Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the East Riding of Yorkshire series. Together with the unparished city of Hull, it forms the county of the same name. There's 172 parishes here. Which one are we in today? Welcome back to the East Riding of Yorkshire, folks. Now, if you watched my Number Gnome episode last week, you'll remember where we ended. It was quite bright and there was plenty of visibility. Well, we've headed up now into one of the highest points of the East Yorkshire Wolds, and you can tell because it's literally only five or ten minutes later and I'm surrounded by mist. <laughs> a bit of hill fog, believe it or not. We're not quite at the highest point of the East Yorkshire Wolds. That will come next week, but we're pretty darn close and we're starting this one outside a church. Welcome to Millington. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to a foggy Millington, a small village on the East Yorkshire Wolds, which is situated approximately two miles northeast of Pocklington. It lies on a part of the Wolds known as the High Wolds, a term used to describe the highest area here in terms of elevation. We're not at the summit here, but we're not that far away. There are any number of local trails and walks over these beautiful dales, including the Yorkshire Wolds Way and the Minster Way, both of which we're very accustomed to seeing by now. Millington, as a result, is an extremely popular place for cyclists and ramblers, and both of those groups of people are catered for in various ways in this village. The village is famed for a Morris dance known as Tom's Heyman, a local tradition dating back to 1995. It takes place on Yorkshire Day every year outside the one and only pub here called the Gate Inn. Millington's parish boundaries also extend quite a way to the north, and they take in another small hamlet that features a second church and a very interesting wooded dale. The fog may have obscured some of this, but the Yorkshire Wolds look beautiful in any weather, and the best part about that is there's still lots more to see of them. But for now, this is Millington, folks. Let's go and check it out. We start on Church Lane at St Margaret's, the nave of which dates back to the mid-12th century, with its chancel being added in the 14th. Of particular note here is a stained glass window, installed in 2007, designed by Tom Denny, and it shows the road to Emmaus, which depicts scenery around Millington. In the churchyard, there's the remains of two Grade II listed cross shafts. This is one of them. At least one of them has been moved into the churchyard from a nearby roadside. The church is a Grade 1 listed building forming part of the Pocklington Group. It holds about 60 people and opens daily to visitors. Over the road and down a shallow hill, we find Millington's Village Hall, which is an old converted Methodist chapel. This can be hired for many different types of events, used as a meeting room or even as barn-type overnight camping accommodation. It's got it all, hasn't it? Okay, now we're heading into the complete whiteout. 
as you can see walking along this road here there's uh not much to see because uh it's uh covered in fog which is going to cause me a problem later in fact because i was intending to show you millington pasture which is out to the north east of the village hopefully this is lifted by the time i walk around the village that i can show you that it's quite beautiful um according to locals so hopefully we we'll have to see that later if not never mind but uh let's see what else we can find in the village first eh After walking through a bit more gloom, we're on Main Street, which is Millington's principal road. It has a nice mix of housing styles, and it's also got a few amenities. Like, for example, these two holiday cottages, which stand next to Millington's one and only pub, the Gate Inn. The Gate Inn is named after the pasturage, or gate allowance, made to farmers depending on how many sheep they grazed. Parts of it date from the 1600s, and today the pub is famed for Tom's Heyman, a Morris dance. Millington used to have a post office as well. It was this white building in shop now. The post box outside featured a nice seasonal bit of yarn bombing too. Not far away from these is the Rambler's Rest, a licensed restaurant and tea room which is a favourite spot for cyclists. This serves cream teas and homemade cakes in the summer and in the winter months customers enjoy its old range with its roaring open fireplace. Okay, so we're effectively at the centre of the village here, outside Town Farm. That's uh, Church Lane, which we saw earlier. And then to complete the walk, I've just got to go up there and back round to the car park. There's a parish council notice board here, so you know what I'll do with that. One of those is going on there. Probably won't stick on the ice and snow, but there we go. At least I can mark it off. There's also a map here as well, so I can show you where we've been and where still to go. So I parked here, there's a little car park opposite the church walk down here around here where there's pretty much nothing and then up here and that is where i am right now and then like i said to complete the route is just a simple case of walking around there nice circular route and then of course there's a few other bits and bobs to show you afterwards Cyclists are catered for in another novel way in Millington. This old red phone box has been turned into a cycle repair kiosk, complete with air pump, oil and a host of spanners and tools for bike maintenance. It's no wonder then that cyclists love to come to Millington. Ramblers do as well and there's no shortage of trails. Here just around the corner from the phone box we find ourselves crossing the Minster Way, the long distance footpath which connects York to Beverley. Millington is about half a mile from the Yorkshire Wolds Way and the Chalkland Way and the Wilberforce Way is close by as well. A lot of these trails and paths cross the dales which lie to the north of Millington. In a short while we'll see some of those as we head for Millington Pasture which is on this signpost directing us to the northeast. Our main walk ends here at this small patch of allotments which are guarded by a local scarecrow. One more for the fans out there. Okay, so the fog's not lifted, but I will still drive down to Millington Pastures and also catch Millington Wood while I'm at it. Before I do that though, Millington's parish boundaries cover another settlement which is up to the north, and that's called Great Givendale, where there's another church. Let's go and check that out first. So this is Great Givendale, which is sometimes known as just Givendale. It consists of one main street, which has a handful of properties and a farm. Givendale is strongly associated with the Singleton family. John Singleton was a jockey and lived at Manor Farm, now known as Manor House and Manor Cottage. This tree was interesting. It's a walnut tree, which was planted to commemorate the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II in 2012. This here is a sign of things to come. Givendale stands on the edge of a beautiful shallow valley in which you'll find St. Ethelburga's church. This is not the original church. This is an 1849 rebuild paid for by the Singletons. 
as such, there are many tablets and memorials to the Singletons in here. The original church was Norman, and all that survives is the chancel arch. The rest was pretty much razed to the ground, and its stones were used to mend local roads. And this church was open as well, so let's have a quick look around inside. Let's head into the chancel first. There's a nice bit of stained glass up there. There's a huge tablet on the wall to the right. It's probably a bit too high up for me to read, but that's that anyway. There's a smaller one on this side. I'll just have a read of this. Oh, <laughs> wow, this is, this is written in, uh, it's not Old English, or what is it actually? Is it Latin? Is this Latin? Yeah, it's Latin, isn't it? Yeah, I can't tell what that says. <laughs> I'm sure there's some uh, Latin translators out there who could potentially work out what that says, but I can't. <laughs> I'm afraid my Latin is not very good. So let's go to the back. There's a few more tablets up here as well. Three of them. We've got this amazing font with a tall cover as well. And there's a little bit of a history lesson here for Givendale Church. So if you want to pause the video, you can have a read of that, I suppose. It's a bit uh, too long, didn't read, I'm afraid, for me. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a little history of this church of St. Ethelberga. And actually at the bottom here, there's a bit about St. Ethelberga as well. Ethelberga was daughter of King Ethelbert of Kent, probably born around 605 to 610 AD and died around 647. So not a, a, lot, not a long life really, you know, not very long. Only about uh, 30-ish 30, 30 years, 30, 40 years. So there you go, there's a bit about uh, St. Ethelberga as well. Right, time to uh, move on from uh, Givendale, or should I say Gevydale, old name for it, uh, and head out towards Millington Pasture next, and Millington Wood. And I'm going to drive this, I'm not going to walk it because uh, it's much easier to drive. Basically what Millington Pasture is, is um, a series of hills and dales, similar to the one you can see here outside this church. And I imagine they're going to look absolutely fantastic in the uh, frost and ice and snow. The only thing I'm worried about is how slippery the hills are going to be. So I'm going to have to take this really, really slowly, drive very carefully uh, along the hills. So uh, yeah, let's get to it. So here we go then into Millington Pastures via a very narrow, steep and bendy road. As we turn these tight corners, Millington Wood will come into view. I'll talk a little more about Millington Wood in a special section in a moment. Millington Pastures though is an area of special scientific interest and it's a system of dry chalk valleys. These deeply incised and branching dales around Millington are some of the finest examples in England that remain undisturbed from development. Their grassland slopes are grazed by sheep and highland cattle and are crossed by sheep tracks, ancient Roman roads and long distance paths. The dales all have names. Here we're heading for Nettledale and Frendeldale, but around where we are here there's also Sylvandale, Scordale and Millingtondale. In all, this has to be one of the most beautiful areas we've ever seen on the channel. I imagine in the summertime, walking these dales is like heaven on earth. So then, Millington Wood. This is one of the few remaining wooded dales in the Yorkshire Wolds. This beautiful ash wood occupies Lilydale, dating back nearly a thousand years. Lilydale is a typical dry valley of the Yorkshire Wolds and has the distinctive features of a chalk cast landscape. The wood was declared a nature reserve in 1991. It runs to some 52 acres and it includes an ancient area of ash trees, a remnant of the ash wildwood that once covered the entire Wolds. It also features Millington Springs, which formerly supported beds of watercress. The wood has been owned by several estates in the past, and it was let out to tenants to provide fencing materials, furniture and fuel by making charcoal. Charcoal makers once lived in the woods and used earth kilns. In the 1960s, commercial forestry operations replaced some ash trees with beech and Norway spruce. 
the local authority bought the wood in 1986 and opened it to visitors. So my initial plan wasn't to stop, it was just to carry on straight through into the next village. But uh, I've, I've had to stop because this is just fantastic. I absolutely love scenery like this. So uh, I found a, a safe place to pull over. There's a little um, parking space just there on this very narrow road. Uh, heading down here towards a little bridge, which I assume runs over some kind of beck. Um, let's have a little wander down here. I'm not going to be out of the car for too long because it's cold. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there was no way I wasn't going to stop. This is just beautiful. There's no wonder that the East Yorkshire Wolds are uh, an area of outstanding natural beauty. It's lovely. It's absolutely fantastic, even in the snow and the ice. It seems to be a, some kind of little pond, actually, as opposed to a beck. That looks like a, an entrance to a field or something. Not a not an average, not a, not a an arable field. <laughs> Absolutely not. But uh, yeah. Oh, it's oh, it's oh, is it a lake? Oh, it might be a lake. Look, I can see like a yeah, it's a lake. Look, not a very big one. So it's sort of at the bottom of this dale of this valley. And uh, yeah, it's a nice place to end actually. That's been Millington, and I've loved every minute of this one. People told me this was beautiful and they are not wrong. Absolutely fantastic. Certainly puts the East Yorkshire walls on the map in a very decent light, doesn't it? Time for me to move on to my next one here in the East Riding and in the East Yorkshire walls. And as I said at the beginning of this video, the next one is on the highest point of the East Yorkshire walls. So I'll see you there next week. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot. This has been the Parish of Millington and I'm out. Music